Coming soon from SJS Direct, East Eve, Little Girl Lost. The Devilish Diva helps a lost little girl find her way home in this devilishly funny East Eve series adventure. Get East Eve, Little Girl Lost at online booksellers this April. A couple of days ago, actor Samuel L. Jackson was upset because many black actors or African American aren't getting roles in mainstream films. And while we see a lot of black faces today in films these days, they're not African American actors. They are black actors from the West Indies, they are black actors from the UK, they are black actors from Australia, and they're black actors from European countries and African countries. So while there is a black face in the film, it is not an American face. And I think one of the reasons why we are seeing so many of these foreign faces is, one, because your white liberal pretty much sees these foreign actors as so-called, quote-unquote, more comfortable to work with, and two, because the white liberal sees these actors as a novelty. And the third reason why we see so many of these foreign actors is due to the shortage of African-American actors in America. And that's one of the things that Samuel L. Jackson didn't really touch on, was this shortage of African-American actors in America. When it comes down to African-American actors, again, a lot of the actors we have in the black community, they're getting old. I mean, people like Halle Berry and Jamie Foxx are 50 years old. Denzel Washington is 60 years old. Samuel L. Jackson himself is set on near, near 70 years old. Vanessa Williams is near 60 years old. Sally Richardson is going to be 50 this year. So a lot of the black actors who were a part of black Hollywood in the 80s and in the, in the 90s, these people are middle-aged. So there's a reason why there is so much importing from white liberal Hollywood, because the black actors that they had and made money off of over the years, a lot of these people are ver are getting middle-aged and they're getting into their senior years. And there hasn't been much of an effort by black filmmakers to go out here and cultivate new talent, such as the way Rick Famuyiwa tried to do with the movie Dope. When it comes down to trying to cultivate new talent in the African-American community, with, when it comes down to actors, there hasn't really been a concerted effort like it was back in the 80s when Spike Lee was making films. You see, a lot of black actors got their start with guys like Spike Lee, Reginald Hudlin, um, Robert Townsend, and many of the black filmmakers of the 1980s and the early 1990s. A lot of those guys got their careers pretty much launched in films like House Party, um, Boys in the Hood, um, Hollywood Shuffle, Do the Right Thing, and many others. Many black actors got their careers started with those black filmmakers. Unfortunately, there hasn't been a serious effort to try to cultivate new talent from people like your Lee Daniels or your Tyler Perry. They have not really made a serious effort towards developing fresh faces for the camera. And that's why we don't see many African-American actors as I see it, because we don't see those fresh faces because black filmmakers like Lee Daniels and Tyler Perry would rather hire older actors because they believe the older actors are a stronger draw at the box office. And because they believe those older actors are a stronger draw, they're afraid to take a risk on young talent because that's what really in the, in the late 80s, early 90s was being done. A lot of risk being take, made by guys like Spike Lee um, and Robert Townsend and many other black filmmakers. They were out here, they were taking rookie talent, fresh talent, fresh faces, and they were putting them on the camera because this was their first film or their second film or their third film, and they wanted to give somebody a shot. And a lot of actors like Robin Givens and many others who were working television were able to get shots in film and get those breaks and, you know, make efforts to get known by a larger audience because there were opportunities being offered at these smaller films. I mean, even Samuel J L. Jackson himself got a lot of big breaks because of Spike Lee. I mean, Spike Lee pretty much launched so many black actors' careers, it wasn't funny. I mean, what, if it wasn't for these small in the black filmmakers, a lot of these black actors we see today, they wouldn't have gotten the opportunity to show their range or show their skills 
And that's what's one of the big problems when it comes down to all these foreign actors taking black roles, because we didn't really do a good job in the late 90s and early 2000s towards developing and cultivating new talent. I mean, when it came down to talent, we always saw the same faces over and over again. And we really didn't see a lot of films where rookies were being presented to the forefront or rookies were being supported. I mean, I have not seen many films with a fresh face outside of Dope. Dope was the first film where I actually saw, you know, fresh young talent being given a stage to show their range. And they did a very good job of showing their range. That was a great film. But those type of films, you know, they didn't really get the push from mainstream Hollywood. They didn't get the support from mainstream Hollywood. And they didn't get support from black audiences. And again, this is why we are seeing so many foreign actors in black roles. You know, Africans, people from the UK, people from Australia, and people from Europe. Because they have to import people because we didn't do a good job of cultivating and developing our own talent. I mean, people like Lee Daniels and Tyler Perry didn't want to develop fresh faces. They didn't really want to, you know, bring rookie talent in. That's something, if I was making films, I would have made an effort to do, bring in those fresh faces, because the fresh faces, that's how you're going to keep black African Americans working, and this is something we just didn't do. Now, the second part of it has to do with these white liberals. Now, when it comes down to this white liberal, he wants to, in some ways, minimize the image of African Americans. So he wants African he wants black people who fit his narrative. And a black person from the UK or the black person from France or the black person from Europe or the black person from Africa or the black person from Australia has a different view of black of, of the black image and they fit the white liberals narrative a little bit more comfortably. I mean these guys have similar values and what a lot of people don't understand is Foreign blacks have a different view of the black experience than American blacks. So a lot of white liberal directors feel more comfortable working with these kind of guys because, one, these guys think that they are, aren't really black. They think that they're European, they're British, or they're Australian first, and they're black second. And, two, the white liberal sees them as somebody they can fit more, they feel more comfortable working with. Because if they have to work with an African American, the African American will definitely call them on racism. Whereas this guy, his experience is different, so he's not really going to call this guy on racism. He's not going to hold him accountable for racism on the set. He's not going to look at the images, you know, on the set of pictures of African Americans the same way. Because his experience is different. He's from a European experience, or he's from an Australian or an African experience. And that makes him a completely, or her, a completely different person than the person who lives in America and is playing a black role. So your white liberal wants to bring them there, and he also wants to minimize the image, and he also wants to minimize, you know, the issues he has with African Americans. So he feels more comfortable working with a foreign black person than he would with a traditional African American actor. I mean, when it comes down to certain roles like your no good deed, uh, a guy like Idris Elba won't wouldn't really understand that what a black brute is because a black brute is an American concept and that's an American stereotype. So he wouldn't understand that the role he was playing in that movie was a black brute. So they have it's easier for the white liberal to go out and hire this guy to play the role than to say go get Cuba Gooding or Jamie Foxx who's going to look at that role and say, "Hey man, that's a black brute. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to pass on that." The UK black guy is going to take that role and think it's okay. And when it comes down to the slave movies, you know, the UK black guys are going to say the same thing. Okay, slave role is fine. I don't have a problem with that. He doesn't understand American culture, and the African actor doesn't understand American culture, and the and what how this role is racist and how this role is degrading. They don't understand it, so they're going to go along with it because, it, they again, they see it as an opportunity. They see it as playing a black American role and expanding their range versus the black African American who says, you know what, this is a racist role, I'm not going to take it, or this is just the same old thing, and they're not going to call this white liberal on his nonsense in Hollywood. So they have no problem working with those UK actors because they feel more comfortable with them and they can feel they can get away with more stuff with them than they would with an African American. An African American, in many cases, is going to be a little bit more self-aware 
And when they're playing a black character, they understand black culture and black history a little bit more, whereas the culture in the UK is different, the culture in Africa is different, and the culture of black people in Australia is completely different than the one in America. So the white liberal uses that, uses, uses, is using these people to, one, minimize that African-American image and to create the narrative that he wants regarding the African-American image. So he's manipulating these foreign actors and it fits his narrative and he can use these guys to fit his narrative a little bit easier than he would an African-American. With an African-American actor like Samuel L. Jackson or a Cuba Gooding, he's going to get some pushback. Even with a Denzel Washington, he's going to get some pushback on certain things. But with a John Boyega or one of these other actors, he's not going to get as much pushback on a role. And the third reason why you're white liberal, you know, he really likes working with foreign black actors over traditional African-American actors is the novelty. Because when it comes down to this white liberal, he does not really see black people as people. Again, he wants the smooth world. And in the smooth world, everybody has their place. And he usually tries to elevate the image of the foreign black because he believes that the foreign black... Um, is somebody he can manipulate a lot easier than the traditional African-American. Now, he knows th that, the, that the traditional African-American is a little bit more aware of what he's trying to do in pushing the narrative. But the foreign black doesn't really know because he thinks that he is different. He thinks, in some cases, that he's better than the regular African-American actor. So he's going to go along with things, and, they, and the, the whole thing is the white liberal sees them as a novelty. He's like It's like a pet, because to him... Oh, it's a it's a white it's a black person who talks like a British person, or it's a black person who talks like a French person, or it's a black person who talks like an Australian person, or it's an African person. And for them, it's like an exotic pet. It's like an exotic novelty, and they're showcasing this person like they would that exotic pet or that exotic animal. They don't see them as a person. This is one of the reasons why I understand why the white liberal is one of the biggest racists in the room. He's looking to exploit these foreign blacks and use them and as their image as African Americans because he wants to show them off as some sort of novelty or some sort of oddity and he does not see them as a human being or an actor trying to show their range. What he's trying to do is he's trying to pretty much say that oh this black person is 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 acting just like us so He's kind of got a semblance of humanity about him more than your traditional Negro. And this is, this is again, what this white liberal is doing, but a lot of people can't see the big picture regarding this white liberal and his plans, you know, to degrade the African-American image. He wants to go out here and minimize that image by going in and bringing in these um, foreign blacks and then create stories that fit his narrative for black people and then... After that, he takes these same actors and presents them as some sort of novelty to the world, saying, oh, this person is a black British person. Oh, this is a black French person. This is a black Australian person. They, they're, they're, they're not like these other blacks. They're exotic. It's like an exotic, again, like an exotic pet. Then a lot of people don't see what this white liberal is doing um, regarding black actors and, in Hollywood right now and, and hiring all these foreign blacks. But this, again is about pushing a narrative and creating an image of African Americans that fits his view of the world and makes him comfortable and having talent that will pretty much be submissive and obedient or just naive and not understand you know the issues being presented regarding the African American image this is what he's trying to do is change our image to fit his narrative and he's using these foreign blacks in a way to do that and one of the core reasons why he is able to do this is because we haven't gone out here and made the efforts to support our own films, you know, and go out here and make quality films and then cultivate fresh talent. This is something we just have not done over the last 20, 25 years. African Americans in film have gotten complacent. They've gotten lazy. They want to tell the same stories over and over again about black that fit the black feminist narrative and the black victimization narrative. And they haven't come outside of the box. And that's one of the core reasons why, you know, black film has really stalled over the last 20, 25 years. Because we're not going out here trying to get outside of our box and do different things. 
where we can develop our own talent because, again, African-American actors were developed by African-American filmmakers. If it wasn't for guys like, again, Robert Townsend, Spike Lee, Keenan Ivory Wayans, um, the Hudlin brothers, we wouldn't have seen many of these black actors who came up over the last 20 years. Almost all these guys got their start with black filmmakers. They didn't get their start with white mainstream filmmakers like these black British actors did. Mostly, most of these actors that were that we saw for the last 20 years, the Jamie Foxes, the Sally Richardsons, the Halle Berrys, the Vanessa Williams, um, many others, we saw them in black productions created by black people. And that's what we need to understand. If we want to maintain the African American image, we're going to have to go out here and make the films ourselves. Because we were the ones who created the talent, we were the ones who cultivated our talent. But the big problem with guys like Samuel L. Jackson is they have gotten complacent and they're upset at the studios, but the studios never created our talent. We created our talent. We developed these actors. We elevated these actors. We supported them at the box office. We supported them on, on television. And we elevated many of these black actors and these black directors and these black producers. But the sad part is that over the last 20 years, many in black Hollywood have gotten complacent. And instead of thinking about focusing on the next generation, they've, all, they've, they've just become selfish and stayed to themselves. Instead of thinking, let me come back for the next guy and elevate him so that he can take my place. And in our entertainment medium, they instead, they integrated and went in with white people, and now they're upset because the white people are telling them that we want to bring these foreign blacks in because these guys are more agreeable to our narrative, and because they are more agreeable to our narrative, we feel we want to, we want to work with them instead of working with you. And that's, again, our fault because we have to understand who, who made black film, and again, it was black filmmakers, black producers, and we were the ones in charge of our image. But the sad part is because a lot of us got, a lot of these black actors got comfortable. They didn't understand that the person creating the opportunities for black people were other black people. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, Samurai Goddess. The Goddess Next Door takes on Kung Fu killers in this action-packed martial arts Isis series adventure. Get Isis, Samurai Goddess, and paperback and e-readers today.